Way back in December, we received a package. And it's been sitting outside for... Like six months? Ever since. <laughs> yeah, it's been sitting outside ever since. And now it's time to actually reveal it. Yeah, let's reveal it. All right. So this is our Mr. Cool 36K unit. It actually has two heads. One is gonna be in our kitchen area. The other is going to be upstairs in our loft. We were originally gonna go with radiant floor heating, but as this house build has progressed, we realized that was gonna take us a long time and we are ready to move into this house. So when we started checking out mini split systems and found out how easy this would be to DIY, we knew this was the right fit for us. Yeah, and one of the cool things about the their installation is the line sets come all pre-charged. And we kind of think we can get this all installed, both units, in one week, which is really fast for us. <laughs> you saw us earlier where we were using the template that Mr. Cool supplies to line up where the line set was gonna go through the wall, and we drilled that hole out so that we had a location to pass the electronics and that line set through the wall to the outside. And yesterday we actually put together the forms where this outside unit will sit on a concrete pad. So we're gonna be pouring that today and then we're gonna take you guys along for the ride of installing both of those units in the house and this outside unit and show you how easy this installation process can be. All right, let's get to work and mix some concrete. Are you just gonna put it like right here and we're gonna mix here? Yeah. Are we gonna mix one bag at a time? I was gonna try to do two. Okay. So we measured the outside diameter of the Mr. Cool unit, and we also accounted for a 12 inch setback from our foundation. So we're gonna make our form for our unit be 40 inches by 30 inches, and that should give us a couple inches overhang on each side of the unit once we get it attached. One thing we did yesterday was we made sure that this actually has a quarter inch slope away from our house. So when it rains, the water is running away from our house. And one other thing we forgot to mention as far as why we chose the mini split system is because when we were considering doing radiant floor heating, we weren't going to have an air conditioner for our house, which is okay in the Pacific Northwest. It gets cool enough at nighttime that you can open your windows and cool down your house. But the past two winters, we've been seeing really extreme temperatures in the summer, and it seems like that trend's just gonna keep on going. So we were really excited when we found this system, and it would be an air conditioner as well as a heater when we don't just want to rely on our wood stove. Push down on the okay. two by four as we go back and forth. All right, we just got done pouring the concrete into the form here. We screeded it off so it's nice and level. And now we're gonna let it set for about 20 minutes before we use the edging tool on it to give it that nice round over and finished look. 
So while we're waiting for that concrete to finish, we have to finish that hole that went from the inside to the outside where our mini split lines are gonna run. We already have the hole through the house, through the logs, but we put the shiplap over the top of it. So now we're gonna drill a pilot hole and get the, the three and a half inch hole from the inside cut out as well. So we have a hole that goes all the way through and ready for our mini split to be mounted. We're gonna have to flip this over and it's attached to the back. Voila! So, one, two, three, four, and then a couple up there. Yeah. I think we're all good. I mean, I think we're ready to mount the thing. We just mounted the bracket that our head unit will hang on in our great room. And now it's really just as easy as hanging a TV, basically. So it's pretty simple process. One thing we did that maybe you don't remember seeing is we made sure we had a piece of blocking back behind this before we put this wall in. So we knew we were really putting this into secure studs and it was all set and then ryan also finished that hole all the way so now we're set to hang the unit the concrete pad is setting up we're making awesome progress we had our three and a half inch hole here and we put this protective sleeve that goes all the way out to the outside it's a pretty tight fit but i was able to kind of expand the size of the hole and get it through the other side of this has a finish plate on it that finishes the outside. So we got that on and now we're ready to mount the unit. But before we do that, we have to make the line set come out straight at a 90 degree so that we can put it through the hole before the unit goes up on the wall. So we're going to get that prepped and ready and then we should be pushing it through the wall. Yeah. We're going to combine the line set and the condensate drain together with some electrical tape making sure that the condensate drain is on the bottom so we're going to get that done now and then ready to put it up so you kind of brace it down at the bottom here and then slowly okay and that one is the drain, right? One yeah. of the bumpy. Yeah. Good? Yes. And then I'm gonna put this up. Okay, now it's going through the hole this time. Okay, we're through the hole. Is it between the two lines? It's between the two lines. <laughs> we got the head unit for the main room installed out here and I'll show you the line set coming through the outside. We have it coming through the outside and there'll be a little uh, cover that covers the, uh, the line set coming down. The condensate line will run all the way down and then the line set will run over to our pad over there where we have the compressor unit. So while we're waiting for the concrete to finish drying, 
uh, so we can put the compressor unit on there. I need to get the disconnect wired up so we have power for the units. I'm going to get the disconnect up on the wall right here. And we have a short, like, 15-foot run to the panel there. So it should be a pretty easy project. Going to knock that out. Sarah is off taking one of our kids to their piano lessons. And I'm going to see if I can surprise her to get this done by the time she gets back. All right, I have my my disconnect box for the AC unit. I'm going to open this up and get it attached to the wall. Then I'll start running the wire and the conduit back to the main box. It's a new day and we are working on our mini split install still. We are up in the loft area today and we're going to be putting up a portion of this back wall in here. And the mini split is actually going to go right above Ryan. So we're only gonna complete, thank you, that was a great Vanna White. <laughs> <laughs> so we're only gonna complete the shiplap up to that point, then Ryan will drill that hole like we did down below for our head unit down there. And then we can start the head unit up here. It's quite a gap. Where do you mean? Just at the bottom there. Oh. But. Who built this floor? Ryan, where are we at in the process now? Do you remember? We're getting jiggy with it. <laughs> we are getting ready to cut the hole out the, the wall. Yeah. And then we can continue bringing the shiplap yep. up. And, and I'm then I'll have keep... to go out on the ladder. That'll be fun. And cut it from the outside. Yeah, and I'm gonna keep doing the shiplap because that has to happen before we can get the whole unit up anyway. So he'll be cutting a hole. I'll be cutting more shiplap and we're getting closer and closer to getting our second head unit up. Divide and conquer. So we're upstairs in the loft area, putting up the second head unit. And so I have my template here that is provided by the Mr. Cool box. And we've laid this out and marked our hole. So I'm gonna get this hole drilled through the wall here. We've marked our attachment point locations. Well, we're gonna need to put in a little bit of extra blocking. And then once we get that done, we'll be able to continue the wall the rest of the way up and we'll be ready to mount it. All right, so we've made it through both of our layers of foam and then I'll be starting in on getting through the wood. From drilling that previous hole, I know that even from drilling from the inside and the outside, I still need to take down a little bit of depth. So I'm gonna take half an inch to an inch out with my chisel. So I have enough room to reach from the other side. Right, I have my pieces of wood cut. We're gonna go see how Ryan's doing on cutting that hole. How's cutting the hole going? 
going okay, except for I'm gonna have to go out on the other side. Oh. I'm tempted to maybe try to chisel and drill out. But... I know, I was thinking that on this one. But now I, I feel like we'll have to go get our kids from school, but then we can probably at least get the bracket up. Yeah. And then, there's a, oh, and get the little sleeve in the hole. So we'll like finish our wall, bracket, sleeve and hole. Be all ready to... And then tomorrow we'll just be wiring. We're done with the wall. Ryan has the hole drilled through our shiplap. So we will be ready to put up the bracket next. There is the bracket. Our bracket is already attached. Up. Last night, Ryan finished up changing that electrical wire system in our unit that's going to go up in the bedroom. So now we're back in our build and we're working on the next portion of our Mr. Cool installation project. We're going to start the day out with just a quick little installation of a backing piece of the line set cover. If we don't put that on now, it will be kind of hard to get it on once the full line set is on. After that, our plan is to get the other head unit installed in the loft bedroom and also put our big outdoor unit onto its cement pad. Now, hopefully we have enough room up here to, to actually mount it. Because you're just going to lift it probably and I'll put the tubes through? Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I guess you can put the tubes in. And then... Lift up. All right. And then... Does it fit? I mean, it sounds like it does. It does. <laughs> Woo! You're going to be too cold. <laughs> it's going to be blowing right you, on you. You know what? I love being too cold at night. Like, yeah. I don't mind if it's 100 degrees outside and I'm in wool socks and under all my blankets. What do we have done now? We've got the, the this tiny head unit mounted in our loft bedroom. And now it is time to go deal with the big outside unit. Yeah, I think we have the pad all poured, so we have to take the forms off, set the condenser unit on there so we can mark the holes where we're gonna need to drill for the concrete anchors. And then we just have the connections left to do, which sounds like it should be easy, but I think it's gonna be maybe a little bit more difficult and time consuming than we, we think. Let's go get this condenser mounted. Okay. Flat bars? No. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Got a nice little sunny spy. 
gonna need it to be 12 inches off the house and we're at 11 and a half right now okay so it needs to go out this way just a little bit we just moved the unit off of the concrete pad here I marked each of the spots with a little sharpie marker so now I'm gonna use my masonry bit, drill those down so we can put our wedge anchors in. Once those are in, we'll be ready to put the unit back on and secure it down to the pad. I got all those holes drilled. All the anchor screws are in. I'm gonna put these little rubber feet that Mr. Cool provides. Helps with the vibration. And then we'll be ready to put the unit back on and secure it down. Last you saw us, we were installing the outdoor condenser unit and we also got the head unit installed of our Mr. Cool system up in our loft bedroom. Now today, we are working on connecting all of the charged line sets from those head units to the outdoor condensers. So we'll take you guys along for this ride and I really think that the system's actually gonna be all done and installed in probably today and tomorrow. So here we go. I'm not sure we want to unroll it all the way. I'm thinking like there. Okay. I want it about, about seven feet of it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. All right, we were just getting out our materials to tighten up and attach these line sets. And Mr. Cool actually includes two adjustable wrenches for you. So I got those out. And as I was looking for it, I found a three and a half inch hole saw. And I did not know that they provided this. I actually ended up buying one myself, cost about $20. So pretty cool that they include that bit to go through the house wall. So they really do make it as DIY friendly as they can. Okay. 
too old for this shit. <laughs> We're gonna take the little caps off and then hand tighten the threads. Okay. What now? Now, I think we see if our line set reaches the condenser. Fingers crossed. I think it's going to. We have the line set all rolled out and up to the compressor behind us. I'm gonna take off this little rain guard vent that is on the side of the compressor so that we can match up the ends of the line set and get these connected just like we did on the indoor unit. set all run we got it to the condenser and the valves were not fitting the way they should so we had some pieces that we thought were adapters those weren't working and then we started doing a little investigating and we believe we were shipped the wrong line set so we are moving on to our other line set that will go from our head unit that's coming out of our loft. Um, so we're gonna get to work on that and we have called customer service and hopefully we hear back from them and we have our fingers crossed that it's something super simple and they can just send us an adapter <laughs> and it'll be so fast. So here we go. So Sarah's underneath the house right now and we measured out 18 feet, which corresponds to the height that we're going to need to run up on the side of the house here. And then any extra that we have of the coil, we're gonna leave down below the house because our compressor unit to the vent where we're gonna be running it only has maybe uh, three or four feet that we're gonna to need to connect it. So it'll make it a little bit cleaner install and hopefully make it a little bit easier to run the line set for us. So it's like I'm breaking free. Keep it more at the top. Okay, you're getting close. Probably about four more feet. Okay. All right, Sarah just pushed that line set all the way out to me. Then now I'm gonna go up onto the ladder and get it connected to the line sets that are coming out of the house from the indoor unit. All right, we got that line set, ran up the side of the house, Sarah's down underneath. We're gonna pass it through this vent right here and then up and to connect to our unit B ports. Hopefully this goes smoothly. Talk to me, Goose. What? Take me to bed or lose me forever. Guess what? What? I think we're gonna have enough. Okay. 
I think that's good where we have it. Well, we got one of them hooked up. It's like plumbing, only like not as traumatic. All right, we got our wire fish ran from the condenser over to the panel. We have all three of our lines. We have our two eight gauge, and then we have a 10 gauge uh, wire that we're gonna use as a ground and we'll just color code it in green. So I'm gonna connect it to the wire fish and then Sarah's gonna pull it through and we'll be ready to connect. Just need to get the two lines in the ground on that one. And the disconnect should be all set up. All right, we are almost finished with this mini split. We just need to wire the disconnect to the outdoor condenser, and then both of the head units, we will make sure are wired up to the condenser as well. And then we can actually turn this on, even though we have only one line set fully connected, we got the go ahead from Mr. Cool that we could turn on the system and try it out today once we have it all hooked up. And good news, we are being shipped the correct line set. So this should be a quick, easy fix once we have all that and we'll be done with this unit. Well, I wish you would have known that when I was at Ace this morning, right? getting rubber maids for duckles. Oh. All right, Sarah just told you we were working on getting the line from the disconnect over to the compressor. Unfortunately, I only ordered 50 feet of eight gauge wire and we needed almost all of that to go from the panel to the disconnect. So I need to pick up some more eight gauge wire just for this small little whip from the compressor to the disconnect. But in the meantime, we're just gonna temporarily connect it with some 10 gauge, which will be perfectly fine for a test. And then we'll make sure that we get the eight gauge in there when we get the conduit and everything permanently installed. So a little bit of a setback, but nothing that's gonna hold us up from testing everything out. All right, we got the line set from the loft attached. So now we're ready to open the valve and check for leaks. So Mr. Cool sends this little Allen wrench here. We're gonna remove this end nut here so we can access that valve. And then once we open that, we should hear the refrigerant flowing, starting to flow through. And that's when we'll spray the connections with our soapy water to check for any leaks. Insert this in there and then you open the valve all the way. And I'm told that you shouldn't force it. So as, as soon as I feel any resistance, I'll stop. Okay, that's the line charging. Okay. I don't see anything. Nope. 
don't see any growing bubbles. Okay. We're about to test our unit, but before we do that, we're doing a few last minute things. Right now, we're actually gonna put in a USB controller that helps us talk to this unit with our smartphones or an Alexa device, or even the, what are they called? The Google? Google Assistant? Or the Google Assistant. Right, so you just open this up. First is the disconnect, which should just energize it to there. Oh, I heard a click. Okay. There's the little louvers. We got that last line connected and checked for leaks and we turned the system on. Everything turned on properly, but we weren't getting any cold air out of the system. So we were we were a little puzzled because we figured we had everything installed correctly and it, it we weren't getting any cold, cold air. And then, so after a few minutes of the unit running, we were getting a, an error. I think it was PC03, which indicated a refrigerant error, low refrigerant or something. Um, anyway, it came down to that we had opened the valves on the individual incoming ports, but there's also on these multi-unit uh, condensers, they have what they call king valves. And so these king valves up here also need to be opened after these got uh, opened as the unit valves got opened. So we did, that wasn't in the instructions, but it was in the quick start guide that came along with it. I was just using the big manual, so I didn't see those sets of instructions. So, but I was able to figure it out pretty easily. So I guess just <laughs> word, word, if you get a multi-unit for Mr. Cool, uh, when you're connecting this, don't forget to open up these king valves, otherwise your system will not work. All right, last time you saw me, we had temporarily connected our disconnect with 10 gauge wire because I ran out of the eight gauge that I'm using to wire everything else with, but I did want to test the system. So we got that all set up. That test was successful. I ordered my eight gauge wire. It came yesterday. So I'm going to get this disconnected and put the eight gauge wire in, and then we'll have this part of the system all buttoned up. And the only thing we're waiting on is this last line set that we need to put in for our main head. And then this system will be installed. All right, you just watched me reconnect the 
the wiring to the compressor with the proper eight gauge wire. The terminals in here are fairly small, so I had to end up using a 10 gauge terminal adapter. They, luckily the eight gauge wire fit in there without having to trim any of the wire or anything, but it does seem like these terminals for line one and line two should be a little bit bigger to accommodate a larger terminal adapter or have a lug or something. Um, that's really the only thing I've found that I feel like could have been improved on uh, the design so far. It looks like everything's all connected and working fine. So we, we should be good to go, test it out, make sure everything's still working. And then once we have the new line set, I'll connect this last control wire uh, to the A spot here and we'll be all wired up and ready to test the whole system. Oh, hello girls. Good morning. All right, good morning guys. Today we are working on finalizing this install of our Mr. Cool unit. And you can see we have our line set right here coming down the house and we need to get that covered up with the line set cover. We've painted those all previously. Sarah's actually in just doing a little touch up on a couple of the pieces. So we're gonna get up on the ladders, get all of our supplies and get that covered because we have our last line set coming in the mail today and then we can put that up and test the system will be all done so really looking forward to having this project done and hopefully we can just get a lot done today All right, a little bit of an update on our progress. Uh, the last time I talked to you guys, we had just heard the UPS get here and the line set had arrived. So we got it all unrolled. We we're really excited to get it set up. And then we had the same connection problems on our compressor, on our condenser, as we did the first time. Like the, the fittings were just not fitting. And so we messaged the customer support at Mr. Cool and the instructions we had, I guess, I don't know if they were outdated a little bit or, or what the deal was, but there's actually a couple of adapter fittings that they did send along with our unit, but there, there wasn't really any instructions on when we needed to use them or why we needed to use them. And the factory installed adapters were already on there. So it actually required us to take off the factory uh, adapters that were installed and replace them with these ones that were sent. So it was all just a little bit confusing. But after we figured that out, now we can actually hook up the line set. So it turns out the line set that was sent the first time actually was correct. Um, we just kind of assumed that it was wrong and there was some miscommunication on everybody's side, whether the wrong thing was sent or we just needed uh, to put on those adapters. So um, in case you have that problem, the these are the new adapters that we put on and I had to... I had to take off these ones here and put these ones on. So these one, these actually come off if you're using, I think the, the online manual said if you're using a 24K or 36K, which ours is the 36, with four or five zones, then one of these does need to be uh, switched out for, for it to work properly. Put your foot on it. Okay. All right, got the threads on there. I'm letting go.
me what are you chasing i couldn't answer clearly but there is something deep inside of me all right now that i have the lines connected i have my soapy water mixture i'm gonna open up the valves on the end here and use the supplied 10 millimeter i believe it's 10 millimeter allen wrench to open up those valves and you open up all the way until you can't turn anymore so and then once i open those up i'll spray with my link my my soapy water to see if we have any leaks no leaks down here the last thing to do on our unit all units don't have these but our size using unit has these king valves at the very top and if you can open all these valves if you want uh, after you've got your lines connected but if you don't open the king valves up here nothing works and we found that out the hard way so everything else is tested now i'm going to open those up and test out the system all right everything is connected we have all of our wiring connected all of our line sets connected next thing to do is turn on the power and test out the system all right so we have our 40 amp breaker here flip that one on and then we have our disconnect power right here i'll flip that on and we should hear the compressor start up all right here to click okay all right i'm gonna go turn on the unit inside all right, you can see the unit behind me. I just put the batteries in the remote here, so I'm gonna give it a power on. I heard a beep. Oh, I just heard the fan turn on in here. It's incredibly quiet. I'm not sure if it's gonna ramp up some more or if that's as loud as it's gonna get. Picked up a little bit when I turned the thermostat down to 70. Let's go outside, see if the compressor's running. I don't know if you can hear that running because it's really pretty quiet, but the fan blades are definitely moving. So let's go inside and see if we have cool air on the main unit. Compressor's running. Now let me go up and see if this thing is putting out any cold air. Oh yeah, that is nice. I'm curious if we kick this thing on turbo, what happens? That is a big difference. This feels amazing. And it's not even that hot today. And it's not even about cooling down the temperature today. But the last two years, we've been working in some of really unseasonably hot summers. And the first year, obviously, we were framing. We were outside. There's no way to cool down the earth. So we had to just push through and do what we could do. But last year, when we were working in the house during the summer, it was unbearably hot and we didn't have anywhere to cool things down. We had no insulation in the ceilings. It is, feels like such a big milestone to be able to heat and cool, more importantly cool, the house while we're doing these projects this summer. Because I don't know if you guys, when you, when you work inside and it's hot, it just, I feel like it zaps your productivity in half. So hopefully this helps us push through and get to the end of this build this summer so we can move in and get that certificate of occupancy. I think now all we have left to do is put some line set covers on and this project is complete. Mine looks good.
We are so close to finishing our Mr. Cool mini split system. We only need to wrap the rest of this mini split line set and get it all secured to those floor joists below our deck and then finish the cover on our back deck and the cover on this one and this system is completely done. We got the line set all secured and wrapped the way we wanted it for the one that comes out of our great room area. So now we're finishing up the covers that run along the back of our house for the head unit that comes out of our loft bedroom. Okay, let's just twist in. We are on the final line set cover of the line set that is coming out of the head unit in our great room. This will be the final portion of this project. We even actually had our inspector come today from L&I and just check our electrical. So after this, this project is done. So I think you could zip tie yours in. I think we're lined up good. That's like money. All right, and now finishing this last part is as easy as, <laughs> and it's done.